Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Dental Edge. I am Dr. Bhanachuk and today I'll be sharing with you tips to score well in oral pathology theory examination. So let's get started. But before that, if you are anyone interested in dental videos, do consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Now let's get started. So I'll be sharing with you seven tips to score well in oral pathology exam. Tip number one is you should always try to draw diagrams. So for that, you should remember the oral pathology diagrams. Now, the most important thing in oral pathology is that how is a particular lesion appearing under a microscope? So you should know the oral pathology diagrams. Most of the questions that are asked in the examination, there'll be a diagram or a histopathological feature associated with the same. So you should remember them. What you should do is you should always keep on revising the diagrams plus just before the day of examination for example tomorrow is your exam so today at least you should give two or three hours to the oral pathology file so that you remember the key points now for example if there's a five mark short note on actinomycosis and you don't remember the description but you remember the diagram you know that there is a sundry appearance and you don't know the basic diagram so at least you will be able to fetch two marks on five or one and a half or two marks without even knowing the remembering the description one of your colleague knows the description but is not remembering the diagram. Maybe that person fetches three marks out of five. But because you only remember the diagram, you will be able to fetch at least one and a half to two marks because of the histopathology diagram. So diagrams are the heart of oral pathology. You should remember the key histopathological features and based on that, you should draw the diagrams. So this is point number one. Point number two is you should always write your answer under few headings. There are some common headings in oral pathology. Most of the lesions, they will have common headings like there will be a basic introduction, then there will be sometimes definition of the lesion, then there is etiology, then clinical features, radiographic features, histopathologic features, treatment and prognosis. So you should always write your answer under these points and uh, these points will also help you to remember the answer more nicely for example in clinical features you should know that okay i have to write the age of the patient in which age it is more common or what is the most common site of occurrence or in which sex predilection then how will the lesion appear in the oral cavity so always try to write your answer in particular headings for example if i want to write on ameloblastoma then i should write a proper introduction but i should also name it introduction i should write that introduction and then in front of that I should write that okay it's an odontogenic tumor it is one of the most common types of odontogenic tumor so basic introduction then I know that I have to write a definition most of the lesions will have these common headings in definition I should write the definition given by Robinson then there is etiology they are basically common five tissues of origin you should write about it then there are clinical features for example it is more commonly present in the mandibular so always try to write the answer under particular headings these are some of the common headings that are seen in almost all answers of oral pathology then radiographic features, you need to know the particular points that what will be the specific points that you will look for in the radiograph. Then there's histopathology and then there is treatment and prognosis. If you see on the screen, these are two copies in which the same content is written. One is written under particular headings as you can see and the other a paragraph wise is written. Same content, the person who has written with the headings will fetch more marks than the person who has just written a monotonous paragraph. So stop writing the answers in paragraphs, make them under proper well labeled headings as you can see on the screen. Maybe this person gets a 7 on 10 or an 8 on 10 and the person who has just written a monotonous paragraph will maybe get a 6 on 10 right so you should have a good presentation third is always try to you know uh, represent your answer if possible in flow charts or diagrams i'm not saying it due to write it in all answers where it is not possible and don't don't just try to force it but wherever it is possible try to make flow charts or make it under a uh, you know show it through a diagram for example if I have to show the pathogenesis of a cyst instead of writing a whole paragraph try to represent it through a flow chart as you can see on the screen this is how uh, you can show a flow chart for pathogens of a cyst and for other answers also you can try to make flow charts if it is possible and also try to draw, uh, draw logical diagrams for example if you are asked a radicular cyst now radicular cyst it is mostly at the apex or sometimes laterally if it is coming to a lateral canal so as you can see on the screen 
after writing a basic introduction then you can also draw this diagram so make your uh, answer more presentable so you will fetch more marks next is again relatable to previous point only that uh, always write in points don't write long long full page paragraphs so that the examiner really does not feel like checking your uh, copy for because the examiner is checking maybe 100 copies in a day or 50 copies in a day so it was very difficult for them to read each and every line that you have written so instead of writing paragraphs prefer writing in points i'm not saying you write in one two three four and keep on seeing okay it was three then four comes no at least put a dash and write your uh, answers so that it looks a little more presentable. The next point is always leave uh, spaces or lines. I'm not saying you to waste paper or you know uh, unnecessarily leave lots of space so that your answer looks larger in size and maybe you'll get more marks. No, the examiners are smart enough. They understand if you're unnecessarily leaving spaces and making the answer look big. But the concept should be that it should be readable. It should, I'm not saying that you should have a very good handwriting. It should be readable, for example, as the previous point I suggested. So leave spaces or line spaces wherever it is necessary to make it more readable and more presentable. Next is always try to underline key points. I'll show you two answers. In one, the key points are underlined. In the other, the key points are not underlined. Now it has an effect, for example, the examiner always knows the key points and is looking for the key points in a particular lesson. The teacher knows, okay, these I-8-10 points are really important and if they are mentioned, you will fetch more marks. Now, instead of the examiner looking for that key points, you should better underline the key points. For example, if there is a question on the histopathology of lichen planners and uh, as an examiner, I'm looking for sort to threat effects. So underline the key points. Okay, there are sort to threat effects in lichen planners. For example, ameloblastoma. In ameloblast, I'm looking for wicker gallium criteria. So underline the important key points. So it's very easy for the examiner to understand. Okay, you know the topic and you will be able to fetch more marks or easily fetch more marks. The next and the last point is always have your presence of mind while you're writing your exam. And uh, for example, if there is a question on ameloblastoma and there is a long question, maybe it is of 8 marks, 10 marks, whatever is your university pattern. And uh, if you do not remember content that is good enough for 10 marks and you remember the uh, classification of odontogenic tumors. So I'm not saying write unnecessary things that are not asked, but at least you can write relatable things to fetch more marks. If you're writing about ameloblastoma and you really feel that the content you know or you don't remember any content that is very less, at least write that it is an odontogenic tumor and write the classification of odontogenic tumor. Then indicate, okay, it falls in this category. So try to have a presence of mind to fetch a little more marks. Maybe, you know, some maybe you're failing from one mark and this answer gives you that one mark. So don't write nonsense, but if, if you feel that you don't remember on a particular point of time in exam, you're not able to recall a particular topic and there is some classification that is relatable or there's something relatable to that. So write that part in that. And um, obviously work hard. There is no substitute for hard work. You will have to work hard, but also work smart so have presence of mind and answer smart so these were the tips to score well in oral pathology i hope it helps you to fetch more marks in your examination also if there's any suggestion or feedback do leave it in the comment box and if you have any queries you can also join my whatsapp group the number for the same is mentioned you can ask any queries there and also it takes lots of effort to make such videos your one like can give me lots of encouragement so do like the video subscribe to my channel and keep watching thank you